All right, today is the day, and it almost wasn't the day, because when I sat down to edit this video, I found out that the audio was missing out of most of it, and it was a shop tour, and that would have been a very boring video, a tour without any audio for me to be able to tell you what we were looking at. So today we are just going to go in and focus on one thing in that video, and that is just a little bit of a step, a little progression in the Arate project. Now lately I have been working on little pieces of the Arate because when I create a video a lot of times I will do one side of the car and there is actually two sides when it's a symmetrical piece that's being done in the car. As an example those uh, vertical beams in the bulkhead in the back. When I laid one up I created a video from that but I did not show you my laminating the second side because I didn't do that. I thought it would just be a little bit boring for you to watch me do the same process all over again. So I have been working on those little things to get everything caught up and so we can progress on. But today we're just going to take a look at a finishing of the ductwork on the driver's side. I thought I'd show you this because this is kind of the same method you would use to do a repair in fiberglass, but we're using it this time to do a finish. If you remember, we had the original part of the tub that has an air duct. We cut that out and we extended that into the engine bay for the air cleaner. We're going to finish that now, at least uh, get it pretty close to being finished. We will actually go back and do a complete finish when we're getting ready to prep for paint. But let's take a look and see what we did. Well, maybe you haven't actually seen the extension of that duct into the engine compartment, so I'm just going to go back, throw some of my old footage in, and show you real briefly how that was done. Now, the tub had this piece all filled in, so we need to cut it out so that we have an opening for the airflow going in there. And we're going to scuff up this surface that we are going to sandwich between the fiberglass to make our extension. That way we get as much strength as we can by having fiberglass on top and bottom in this extension. And I'm going to do the bottom side by using this piece of uh, foam core to be our form to make the shape of the extension as it goes in. And it will contact the tub and the bulkhead in a couple of places. I'll put three layers of fiberglass on top of that to kind of make a prepreg. And the foam core will allow me to carry that prepreg over and hold it in place while it bonds to the bottom side of our extension. And that simply is just propped up and held in place against the bottom. And now we can go and get some fiberglass and I threw in some Kevlar for reasons if you can watch the old video. But that laps over our little groove. And we have about an eighth of an inch that we can keep filling this fiberglass on top. That will fill that groove and bond our fiberglass, our prepreg on the bottom and foam. Bond those two together with that, like I said, the extension of the tub sandwiched between them. And that gave us a very strong structure for that extension into there. But now we need to go and uh, move on with uh, our progress for this week. And that was we're going to make the shape of this thing all conform nicely and make a nice transition for the airflow and your eyes to view as it goes right into that compartment. So I put a little resin on there and then I went and added some Q-cells to thicken the rest of the resin up and we're going to use that Q-cell mixture to basically build our form up into the exact contour and shape that we want. Now the Q-cells are a little bit soft, they make the resin soft, and so we don't want this to be our final surface, but this surface is, is easy to sand, so we're going to put it on and uh, sand it down to make, like I said, the exact curvature of the body panel that goes in there. Now one of the problems in this surface though is that it's not quite vertical, but a little bit of a slope, so the resin wants to keep flowing downhill until it cures, so I actually went ahead and put some peel ply on there and that just gives it a little more adhesive tension to hold it in place and of course makes a nice smooth surface when you're done. Too bad it's not so smooth that we don't have to sand. We do have to sand. Always lots of sanding. And this was kind of a pain in the butt to actually sand this thing because you're always sanding underneath some surface but with a little uh, elbow grease and some time we get it down to almost a finished surface. But what we want 
is a hard surface on the, above that. It won't be able to be marred, scratched, or dented. And we're going to use some fiberglass. But these glass cloths are a little too heavy, so we're going to go to this super fine satin weave, three ounce satin weave, very thin, will make the transition perfectly. Also, I had a little heavier satin weave, a five ounce in a tape. We're going to use that on the back side, but up on the front where the transition goes from all this new formed uh, surface onto the original fiberglass of the tub is that super fine satin weave. And we just laid this all on dry and then just work our resin through it since it's such a thin, fine cloth. And then once that was all saturated, we mixed some milled fiberglass and calcium carbonate. The calcium carbonate gives it this dark color. But that is going to make our resin surface here on top of this fiberglass even harder. That milled fiber and the calcium makes it hard. And as I go in the squeegee this stuff on, try to put it in place as smoothly as I possibly can, some of those particles in the milled fiber and the calcium carbonate settle through the resin and fill any voids in the fiberglass cloth itself. So as we sand down, as long as we don't go too far into the fiberglass, we have a good hard surface. And again, I put some peel ply on there so that we can just uh, tear this off, have a good, nice surface. And you always say you wish we could uh, just go with the pill ply surface, but again, always back to the sanding. We're just going to sand this down now, getting pretty close. But we'll just take our block sander and it will reveal, make sure everything is uh, perfect. And there will be some very minor low spots again. But we will just jump from this position and go with just a light glazing compound for auto body filler because there's just some very low fine low spots less is just a light body filler glazing compound fill those in and there we have our surface there you go that was a short little video due to a loss in audio it seems that uh the camera just needed to be rebooted even after testing all the audio equipment, everything seemed to be fine. It was just a matter of having to reboot. Seemed like that's a typical thing in our modern world of uh, electronics. Anyway, that has been resolved. As you see, we have a little bit of audio here and we will be back next week. Maybe bigger, better things and maybe even uh, include some of that shop tour that was lost. I can reshoot some of that. But anyway, thanks for stopping by today and come back and see us again.